Now it's time to say good morning to Lucy Brown. Lucy, very good morning to good you. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Thanks very much indeed for joining us, Lucy. Now, I can describe you, I suppose, uh, as a slightly reluctant witness here because I know that you were not sure about whether you wanted to come on to talk radio to talk about Tommy Robinson and you weren't sure last night whether uh, you wanted to say certain things. But but tell us what you want to say about Tommy Robinson and, and, and whether the stuff that we read about in the Sunday Times um, is, in fact, uh, the truth. Uh, yeah, no, I just feel a bit annoyed, Mike, like I told you last night, because I said I'd be happy to have a chat with you on the radio, and then you put up a rather salacious tweet to insinuate I'm going to be giving you a tell-all, blowing apart the fraud, the con, the cash cow that is Tommy Robinson. Yes. And I, I've said my piece, I had a moan, my first and only moan, and I took no money from it, and I'm not really interested in divulging too much to you today. No, that's fine. I'm not asking you to divulge too much. But what I am asking you to do is to give us a, a, a peek inside the, you know, the organisation that Tommy Robinson is at the head of, because obviously nobody really, apart from you, um, has ever said anything about it. Tommy Robinson is not all right. What is he? Is he? I would say he's the leader of a populist movement. And would you say, say he, would you say he's he far right? No, I wouldn't say he's far right. I wouldn't say his supporters are far right. Lots of them aren't even right wing. Lots of them are liberal. Lots I think of... it's a horrible lie that he's far right or that his supporters are. You get a couple of bad eggs that throw a couple of things. That happens in most political groups. In fact, the far left are a lot worse, to be quite honest with you. Antifa, the anti fascists, they're the people that do tend to be a lot more violent. I would say that Tommy supporters are more of a reaction to being let down by the government, by the media feeling unsafe in their own communities, having a lot of things changing and not being able to speak out about them. And Tommy has become a figurehead for that. And he speaks, like him or loathe them, he speaks on behalf of them. So I don't really want to run his name through the mud. You know, I had a bit of a moan. I'm kind of, you know, willing to leave it at that. Um, but it's not about him in a way. It's about the people who he represents. And there's a heck of a lot of them. And they feel left behind. And they are constantly smeared and called far right. And it's completely... Uh, trying to think of a word that's not a swear word, but it's not true, basically. It's Lucy, I, I read your piece. I, I, I read the piece by Andrew Gilligan in the Sunday Times, and I did find it fascinating. And I felt that there was there were some pieces within this about, you know, that I recognise within political parties and groups, political groups across the country, in terms of that kind of warring in a circle, people that think you should go one way and another. Can you explain to us what kind of reaction you've had from people that follow and support Tommy Robinson since that piece appeared yesterday? Um, there's some stuff going on which is between me and those people that I'm not really interested in talking about, to be honest. Um, you know, fair to say it's not been pleasant. There's quite a lot of anger about what you what you said to the Sunday no, Times. a lot of anger, Mike, and that tweet didn't really help, to be quite honest with you. Um, you said I was allowed to have a go at you about it on the air, and you I can. am going to have a go about You're, it. Absolutely, you were allowed to have a go. Uh, you can say whatever you want on the air, as long as it's legal and we don't get sued. But the bottom line is, uh, you know, I'm in the, in the news business, I'm in the radio business, and when I promote a show that I'm doing, I use language which is, is promoting the show, and that's what it was. It was not intended to somehow, you know, create a false image. OK, the yeah. big scoop. Mike's big scoop. Yeah, well, it is quite a big scoop to talk to you because I've never spoken to anyone who's been as close to Tommy Robinson as you have, and you do say some fascinating things, like, for example, how his uh, his his business is more about making money than it is about anything else, and that, in fact, um, you know, it, it is quite a big business that he's running now, and he doesn't spend as much time on the kind of nitty-gritty of the politics and the policy as he does uh, just sort of counting the money. I'd say that's not strictly true. There's a lot of money that does come in because there's a lot of people that want to support him and they feel so let down by the media that they trust someone who, who yeah, doesn't have journalistic credentials, you know, who doesn't um, necessarily follow the, the rule book. But at the end of the day, they feel like he's speaking for them and he's not fibbing. They feel like the media fibs to them. I mean... You know, yeah, but we but we know like in we in the media know that, 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 that there's an awful lot of fibbing going on from from the Tommy Robinson side. You you yourself describe it as panto journalism. Yeah, I'd say that's not specifically a Tommy issue though. I'd say that because of this new YouTube era of people going out into the streets and being citizen journalists, there is a bit of panto journalism on all sides. You know, yeah. there's also comic journalism where people do sort of parody shows where they go in and try and troll people. You know, it's a kind of it's a it's a new wave right. of uh, online content that's coming out. And, like, on the one hand, it's entertainment, but on the other hand, you know, 
you need to kind of draw the line and decide where you want to be factually correct and where you want to get YouTube clicks. So I think that's something that does need to evolve, but that's not specifically a Tommy issue, if you see what I mean. Absolutely. Um, I'm really interested within a piece about the money that's coming in from abroad and also uh, here. Two questions really from me. One one thing is, is that, you know, who... Were you surprised at who was funding Tommy Robinson and how much would you say balances from, you know, small donations to large ones? And also, is he spending the money correctly in, in your eyes, just in terms of the things to progress his calls and what his supporters want? Um, I mean, he was paying for a team of people to travel the country and cover stories. And of course, you know, lots of people believe in him and want to help him out. So... I can't really say too much because I wasn't even really that involved with the money side of things. I know that he probably does have big donors, but again, I'm not really Mm. the person that knows about it. And what what is it that you fell out with him about, exactly? Just something personal, something private that I'd rather not talk about on the air. All right. Well, let me ask you this. Lots of uh, what Tommy Robinson says is is a blatant untruth, right? And he comes at the comes at the media uh, and accuses the media of not telling the truth and not being honest and hiding things from people. I mean, for example, the whole contempt of court issue uh, that he got arrested for and got jailed for. You know, he was outside a court, having been told that he couldn't do that, he shouldn't do that again, uh, and yet he makes out that the media are somehow complicit in not allowing certain stories to be written. Now, the reason the stories are not written at the time is because the subject is is going on going on inside a courtroom now he knows that i mean do you have any knowledge for example of him having a meeting with his team of which you remember uh, and basically saying right this is what we're going to say even though we know it's not true no no i think the contempt of court thing was probably just a mistake on his part to be honest um and i don't think probably the judge didn't like him very much you know lots of people don't (laughs) <laughs> well, yeah, but you don't get locked up because the judge doesn't like you. You get locked up because you break the law. And, I mean, he was given, he was on a suspended sentence, and that's what happened. But, you know, he's he's now doing this thing where he was, um, you know, in prison. He was literally like Papillon or like Nelson Mandela. He was locked up in solitary confinement. You know, outside prison, uh, people uh, like the head of UKIP, Gerard Batten, were saying, Tommy's going to be murdered by Islamic prisoners. You know, it was all rubbish, wasn't it? Um, I don't know how much of it is rubbish because I don't know how the prison system is run in this country, but I know that he just won his appeal, didn't he? So Well, no, he judge... didn't. No, he's been released um, uh, pending... He's on bail, but pending an, pretem- is, no, he's been released pending a new hearing. That's another lie because he, he hasn't won his appeal. He's won his freedom, but the appeal the goes on. The trial was rushed, though. Well, we don't know yet because we haven't had the new hearing, so it's not clear. Right. OK, well, I'm just saying, you know... Like him or hate him, we need to, you know, if, if there's a, an accusation against the, the British prison system, you know, we've got to be impartial. So we've got to hear it. Well, we've got to hear it, but we've got to hear it, the truth as well. You know, I mean, Tommy Robinson claims yeah. that he wasn't fed in prison, which I'm sure is not true. Um, he wanted a television, apparently. Such was his, uh, you know, uncomfortableness. That he, well, he was asking for a TV. We know that because somebody's released his, his letter to the prison authorities. You know, all I'm saying is, is that he deals in an awful lot of untruths. And, and so having somebody like you who worked for him, you must know that. I just I just don't really want to talk about it, I'll be honest. Can I just can I ask you a yeah, question? You can, me? yeah. Um, but I may not want to talk about it. That's fine. Why do you call him alt-right? What do you think is alt-right? What do I think is alt-right? Well, I call him a lot of things, actually. I don't. I think that's the first time I've called him alt-right uh, ever. I think I call him alt-right, I suppose, because alt-right has become a catch-all term for all sorts of people who are ranging from, you know, um, Paul Joseph Watson to um, <laughs> Sargon of Arkad to, you know, all of these characters, Count Dankula. You know, some right. of them would also, some of them would say that they're not alt-right. But it's become a term that people use, I suppose, maybe wrongly, to describe a sort of a a collection of figures who are kind of slightly on the outskirts of mainstream politics. Well, I would say that that's actually an untruth because the alt-right hate Paul Joseph Watson. Do they? The the alt-right is a very specific, rather small group of people. Well, you tell me who the alt-right are then. I'd say the alt-right is, uh, they're largely ethno-nationalists. And they're largely an American uh, Yes, no, I agree with that. Yeah, well, I agree. Americans are funding Tommy Robinson. But the Americans are funding Tommy Robinson. That's I mean, what I'm concerned about, the you... funding behind some of this, these things. I think that, you know, if I read into this, and, and you may tell me if I'm completely wrong, Lucy, but the, 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 the sympathy that you have and other supporters have with Tommy Robinson, you know, some of the things that they are concerned about 
yeah. are, are parked with a man that may well do in the future, may well kind of not just misrepresent their views, but take it on himself to create a celebrity culture around this one man that will actually betray the views of those people that are paying for him to, to be there. And that's, that's the interesting thing I'm kind of reading into this. Is that fair or not? Um, kind of, I think, you know, at the end of the day, he's a human being just as I am. He's not perfect. I'm not perfect. We shouldn't have to pick up a camera and go and report on things because we don't trust the media to. That shouldn't be happening. The media should be more impartial and they often call people far right and they often wait until there's trouble, take pictures of Tommy supporters in an unfavorable light and that becomes the story that there was violence and often the violence was actually caused by the left wing. So, you know, you've got lots of people now like Tommy who think, well, that's not true. I'm going to go out and, you know, say it as I see it. So, But are you concerned mm -hmm. that, that some of the things that he says and some of the allegations that he makes, whether they're valid or not, are likely to cause people... Um, to hate Muslims? Um, I don't know, really. I don't really meet many people that actually hate Muslims, if you see what I mean. I see people who are worried about um, political Islam, that is, like Sharia law courts, you know, being in operation in the UK, which they are. Um, yeah, and but what's, kind of... what, what damage the Sharia law courts do to anyone who's not a Muslim? I mean, if anything, well, you should be more upset if you're a Muslim, really. Well, no, I just think that we should have British law in this country. I don't think we well, should Well, we be... do, though. That's the point. See, that's one of those, you know, fake stories that you guys put out in which, you know, we don't have British law anymore. Of course we do. How do we not have British law? No, I'm saying that we shouldn't have two. We should have one, just British law. We shouldn't have Sharia courts operating because that... But Sharia not... courts are basically community courts which operate in Muslim communities with the blessing of the judicial system, but they have no bearing, technically speaking, on British law. If you went to a Sharia court to get divorced, for example, um, you could still go to a British court further after that and have all that annulled if you wanted to. Yeah, but you kind of have marriage fraud going on there where some people end up stuck married under British law, but they're divorced under Sharia law and the husband, you know, goes off and leaves the wife penniless. You know, there are real things that are not told in the mainstream media, which need no, But to all be. of this stuff is perfectly freely available. I mean, there is nothing being hidden, and that's the point. I mean, you guys tell us that all oh, you can't get access to certain pieces of information because the media are complicit in keeping it from you. That's not true. No, it's not true necessarily, but the media do try and steer people away from certain arguments by claiming that the people who talk about this are racist. Therefore, no, I wouldn't say that's true either. I mean, we're talking to you on the, on, the, on the radio. There's a lot of people on Twitter uh, who have accused us of, of pandering to racism by even having you on. I don't agree with that. No, I, don't, I don't think you were racist, Lucy. And, I, and even if you were, it wouldn't stop me from putting you on the radio. Well, maybe you're a bigger man than some, but lots of people I wouldn't. Am. You know, I've lost lots <laughs> of friends don't even want to talk to me anymore because of my association with Tommy. You know, you lose a lot when you get called a racist. And, and I... um uh, can I make a judgment on this as well, Lucy? I think you're stuck between a rock and a hard place because you've done this kind of conversation with Andrew Gilligan in the Sunday Times yesterday. The you know, far right or whoever they are have gone for you because you're meant to be one of them and now longer you're no longer one of them yeah. and you now longer no longer have a home anywhere and Stateless. you just don't you're kind of you know you're I can tell by the interview you're doing today you're almost scared of where to go next and what opinion and your answers on a lot of the questions have been well I don't know really because you're scared to say what you really think because you're kind of broken out from an organization and now are you, are you worried about your own safety or are you worried about the, the kind of comeback you're getting from people within that organization I still, feel, I still feel like the, the people who support Tommy are lots of them, and lots of them are good people. So, I, you know, yes, part of me feels a bit hurt that things are the way they are, but that's not to say that I've just suddenly decided to go back to the left or whatever. No, I can you know, understand that. I can understand that, and that almost that these people that you thought were the ones that you agreed with, the, fa the people that you thought you were in kind of you know, you were working with for some of the things that you want to stand up for, they feel you've turned on them now and you still like them and you still think that they are good people and yet they are part of Tommy's team and you're no longer part of Tommy's team. Yeah, you know, where next for you? Do you think you, this is it for you now in terms of you don't want to comment on it any further or, you know, is this something that, because we are so interested in this, is it that you, something you might say, say more about in the future? Um, I don't know. I mean... I... It's just a tough world to have fallen into. And, like, yes, uh, there's a lot of things that have been said about me <clears throat> over the past three months, which, 
it's uh, you know I'm I'm not sure how to deal with those at the moment, but um, you know I'm I'm confident with myself and how I've acted and uh, I don't know I still like I say I still care about these issues I still want to work towards trying to fix what I think is uh, a big divide in our country and how will you manage to do that now will you have to form some kind of other organization perhaps I want to look into kind of being able to help with this support network for victims of grooming gangs I think that's an important thing to do Um, I still want to kind of keep an eye on the movement and see where it's headed and yeah i had some comments about it, and i'm happy to leave it at that okay and finally because i know you haven't got a lot of time um can you tell us are you still saying that tommy robinson owes you money oh that's private is it it's private yeah well it's in the sunday I... Times, so it's not that private no i know but uh could i just ask quickly um before we leave can i just ask what it was you said about count bankler's girlfriend what it was that i said yeah what, you mean on Twitter? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what I said. You said you didn't no, like what I, I said. Forgotten. It slipped my mind. Oh, it slipped your mind? OK. Yeah. Well, if you go back through my timeline, you can find it. OK. Thanks cool. anyway. Thanks, Lucy. Appreciate your I time. I find it fascinating. I find the whole thing fascinating. The, fi- the whole thing is fascinating. Lucy Brown uh, talking about Tommy Robinson, not wanting to say too much about him, um, but I think she gave us a bit of an insight into the way the organisation does run. Yeah, I recognise a lot of this, to be honest, in terms of once you give a story, yeah. your anger and your unhappiness is out there. Yeah. Uh, it's a full-page lead in Sunday Times, mm. and then they go for you. Now, right or wrong, I don't probably agree with anything Lucy stands for politically, yeah. but rightly or wrongly, I think we interviewed someone that was quite scared. Yes, I think so too, and I think she's more frightened now, perhaps today, than she was yesterday. I agree. And uh, An awful lot of what she calls private has already been written about. 